Day two of Gen Con 2021 continues. And I've got the pleasure of chatting for the first time with Ray Billings from Czech Games Edition. And we're gonna talk about some of the new releases. We're gonna talk about a game that I think might be flying under the radar. I don't know what you think. Yeah. But first off, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much, it's nice to chat. Cool deal. So first off, we have a big release here at Gen Con. What could it possibly be? It is Galaxy Trucker. It is a new revised edition yeah. of the classic. Yeah. So why don't you tell the audience a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, a little bit like you said, Galaxy Trucker is a classic. This game has been around since 2007, which is as long as Czech Games Edition has been around. This is one of our flagship titles, and since then, it's you know, it's developed a really loyal, kind of almost cult-like following because this game is very unique and unlike anything else that you'll you'll play in this industry. But it's been 15 years, and there's a lot of new people in the hobby who may just have never heard about it because it's an older title, and in this industry, there's so much new stuff coming out every single day. And we wanted to kind of remind cult people. Cult of the new, cult yeah, of the new. We wanted to remind people that this is a classic, but it's still great, and we wanted to repackage it to make it more appealing and affordable for your average gamer just getting into the hobby, you know, in the 2020s. Now, mechanically, hasn't it been streamlined a little bit so yeah. it can play a bit quicker? Yeah. The rules presentation has been localized a little better. Yep, yep. So the rule book is just, it's more easy to understand. The language is easier if you're not super into board games. It's not going to confuse you. The old rule book, you know, has well, old rule book games, language. Are, you mean like, yeah. like Monopoly, yeah. Game of Life? <laughs> exactly. It's going to be a little bit easier for you to understand. Um, the box is smaller, so it's just more easy to put on your shelf. It's half the price of the original, so it's more accessible and affordable, which we, we love to be able to do. Um, and as you said, the gameplay is streamlined a little bit. So it's still the same great game, mm -hmm. um, and you can still play it exactly like you played the original, but when you open up this box for the first time, if you're unfamiliar, this game is actually going to only play at about half an hour. Right. So in the original Galaxy Trucker, is an hour, hour and a half, and in Galaxy Trucker, you're playing, you're building spaceships right and typically you'd build all three styles of spaceships and play them in a row but in this new version of galaxy checker we're making it so that you just pick one of the spaceships to build as if it were a difficulty level so level one two or three sure and that makes the gameplay half an hour if you just want a little bit of galaxy checker you don't want to sit around the table for two hours of galaxy checker it just makes it more accessible and helps you get in a lot of reps of the game faster mm -hmm. makes it more approachable for your first time but of course if you're in love with the original three flight trek you can still do that, and we actually condensed down the flight boards. We used to have to have two different flight boards for every player to play all three ships. But we've now made it so that we've got the first flight board here, the second flight board here, and then you open it up. And I know that sounds simple, but this is such a space saver, and I love stuff like this where it's condensed down, super simple. You don't have to be searching through the box for five minutes trying to find what you need. Everyone just gets one of these boards, sure. and you've got all three flights in one place. And I guess it's important to note that the spaceships that the players are flying are uh, pieces of junk. Yeah. And they fall apart. Yeah, that's that's Galaxy Trucker for you. There's been budget cuts, and you just have to build your ship out of what we have out back. See, there's this giant pile of components in the middle of the table, and this is the meat of the game. It's taking one hand, everyone all at once takes one hand, starts looking through these components, taking a look at them. If they like what they see, they place it down on their ship, and they weld it in place. It can't move once you put it down, and then you keep going. If you decide you don't like what you picked up, you put it back face up. So if someone else was looking for that exact you know, double engine, now they now have they can it. Grab it. And it's a really fun fun real-time mechanic. It's it's chaotic, but it's also really thinky because there's a lot of rules about how you build your ship. Not mm -hmm. too many that it's overwhelming, but enough that you have to pause, think about what you're doing, but also try to race against the clock. It's a nice balance of being that real-time goodness, but also not too chaotic that you're just like, what's happening? It's a nice balance. And like I said, it is a classic. Yeah. It is available again. Yeah. Uh, now, it's out in retail too now, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it released yesterday at the opening of Gen Con and it is now in friendly local game stores around the country and its MSRP is $29.95. Oh my gosh, you're practically giving it away. I, honestly, and we also put new content in this as well. We've added um, some title tiles, which you put in to the gameplay if you decide to play all three flights in a row. We've added a new gameplay twist, so even if you have the original, there's that extra goodness. You know, Vlaja, we would never publish something, even if it's a republish of something, without mm -hmm. adding something new. So this sure. game really is a steal at $30. It's, it's awesome. And I believe there are some expansions on the horizon that you can't really talk about can't just talk yet. About yet but you'll i can say that you'll see some if you are familiar with the old expansions you'll see some familiar content but as i said you know vladja there will always be something new in mm -hmm. those expansions for you to look forward to so the game that's flying under probably some folks radars and maybe you disagree but it's under falling skies yeah let me... it is a solitaire game and 
If you take a quick look at it, it reminds you a bit of Space Invaders yeah, from back in the definitely. day. But don't be fooled by that. There's a lot of meat to this. There's a lot of uh, gameplay to it. There's a campaign. Effectively, the Earth is being invaded by aliens, and it's your job to stop them. And it's got a, a very, really nice visual appeal. It's gorgeous. I'm the talking more about it than you. You did a great pitch. You can have my job. You did great. You sold See, but it. I played it, so it. I know. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the, uh, the art style, it's got like a graphic novel look yeah. to it. Yeah, definitely. There's then a the campaign. campaign style, it's got like cartoon strips uh, to yeah. give you the campaign. It comes in these like cartoon strip format, which just fits with that kind of retro video game feel of it really, really well. The theme, the art style, the presentation, if you've never seen this game on a table, it's it's got this big long board and at the bottom is your base and your city skyline and at the top is this alien mothership that's slowly getting closer and it just feels that board presentation feels so thematic and it's so streamlined there's nothing that you don't need on that board it's clean it's simple but it's very striking and there are different cities for you to defend yeah. it's not just oh we're defending new york yeah again yeah. <laughs> yeah and they all add a different gameplay element depending on which yes. city you're defending which is cool yeah, this is, uh, like I said, I think it's a game that's flying under some people's it radars because it's a solitaire game, and some folks are kind of like, oh, I'm not a big solitaire game fan. But that usually just means they haven't played the right solitaire right. games. I yet. mean, if you were introduced to solo gameplay by, you know, multiplayer games that can work solo, like this is a, we designed this for one person. You mm -hmm. can play a co-op if you want, but this is designed from the ground up as a one-player experience, and it really reflects in how refined and elegant that gameplay is. It feels like it was designed to keep your attention. A lot of one-player games, at least for me, because I'm not a solo gamer, mm -hmm. I kind of zone out. There's no one there to keep me engaged. Sure. This game, because of that mothership slowly coming down, that time pressure, this is like the one solo game that really, truly captures my attention for that full you know, half-hour gameplay. And the, th the theme is, is impressive. Yeah. It, it's not just slapped on. It's not where it's like, ah. Uh, this could have been anything. Right. This this is only like aliens coming down. Right. That space invaders right. like, style. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely. old enough to remember that in the <laughs> arcades. So something else we want to talk about, although it's not out yet, and that is an expansion coming for one of my games of the year nice. from last year. Nice. Really enjoyed it. And we are talking about Ruins of Arnak. Yeah. And for those of you who aren't familiar, check out the video review I did of it. I did a live unboxing on the show. If you haven't seen Under Falling Skies, I did a, an unboxing of this oh, too, nice. which is funny because there was a, I got two things. I got a real copy and then I got a demo mm. copy to share and show off because Czech games did not want to spoil the campaign. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's all, very it's hush all hush blurred about out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Funny. We give like press um, images to people, all of the campaign stuff is blurred out. Right. We really want it to be a secret because it's, it's a great I thought campaign. that was pretty wild. Yeah. I, had, I had never received something like that. <laughs> I've, awesome. I've received stuff that's prototype, not finished. I've never gotten something that was like, this is blurred out. Yeah, yeah. I don't want people to know. Yeah. But here's the real game. Hush, hush. So let's go back to Ruins of Arnak yeah. because it is a, I'd say it's like a mid-weight yeah. Euro. It's, it's, it's not real light, but it's not super heavy either. There's a lot of different strategies you can apply. It's sort of, each player's leading an expedition, yeah. and they've got uh, their little little explorer meeples, and there are two kinds of meeples. And why don't you explain it a little bit, Ray? Yeah, so if you're unfamiliar with Lost Rooms of Arnak, it's basically um, a deck builder and a worker placement game that are kind of married by this through line of resource management. Mm -hmm. And they're not um, getting divorced. They're going to stay yeah. married. <laughs> and it's really good. It does, typically when you take two massive mechanics like that and mesh them together, it can either, easily get overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But they're very simple, elegant mechanics, and they, they marry each other really well in the game. Your cards that you get help you place your workers in different ways. And like the worker placement aspect of it is very thematic. You've got this big board that represents Arnak, and the further in you go, like the more worker placement spots open up to you. It's this really thematic yeah. idea of exploration, and the deck building is fantastic. There's tons of cards in this game, but what I love about it is your deck actually stays relatively small. Yes. Buying cards in Arnak, you have to really you have to really want to buy cards in order to get the resources to do so, yes. and it forces you to really use what you have. Arnak is really a game about forcing you to be creative with the resources that you have. It's all about, you want to take one more action? Well, you've got to have these two exact resources, but you don't have that, so it's all womp, about womp, creatively womp. figuring out how to turn what you have into what you need to right. make that one more action. It's great. It's fantastic. 
how to make the best out of the least. Honestly, yeah, at least that's been my experience with that. Sure, Mac. right, yeah. exactly. And this expansion brings in asymmetry to the game. So at the start of the game, you pick a expedition leader to play as. We've got their six character artworks behind me. They're all super unique and gorgeous, and they all cater to very different play styles. Um, and they all come with their own unique player board that has actions that only they can take. Right. They have different starting states. So some characters have more meeple, some only have one, and they all have their own deck that helps feed into that special play style. So you're gonna have unique cards that you only will have access to as playing as that character. It's it's really cool. There, the variety of play styles that the expansion allows you to do are really great. And what I love about it is that it's all balanced, but the entry to like the barrier to entry for each character like varies. Like the mm -hmm. captain over here is very easy to understand if you like just played Arnak once, and then the sure. mystic here is going to take a while to master. But you can play both of these in the same game, and they're balanced sure. with each other. It's and fantastic. players can battle over their own you know choice of of character. Yeah. So if two people want to. There's actually a mini game where you battle over. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Now that's on the horizon. And yeah. something else I should mention about Arnak is that visually it's very striking. The artwork is very impressive. It is one of those games where you got it set up on the table. Let's say you're at a convention. Yeah. It's a game that people will stop and go, oh, what is hey, that? what are you playing? What yeah. is that? It's very striking. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So as, as far as I understand, Ray, I think this year isn't Czech Games Edition sort of focusing on expansions? Yeah, so this coming year, you're going to hopefully, I mean, don't don't take my word for it, quarter, but as far as I quarter, know, you, you will it. be seeing expansions for hopefully Galaxy Trucker and more stuff for Lost Runes of Arnak, because people have been loving this game, and we want to take the time to give them all the content that the, the fans deserve because, you know, it's been doing great, and we love making stuff for it. So we're going to keep doing that for a little bit so you can hope to see more content in the coming year. Very nice. Any yeah. final thoughts you'd like to share with the audience, Ray? Um, if you liked seeing me, I am officially taking over the CGE Twitch channel. I'm one of their new in-house content creators. So if you liked hearing me talk, you can go check out their Twitch channel in the coming months, and you'll see me on there. You can download week. my podcast, and I'm over <laughs> on Spotify. And <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all we got. Follow me on Instagram. And... <laughs> Ray, thank you so much yeah, for no taking problem. some time out here at Gen Con 2021. We're actually hanging out in the uh, kind of exclusive yeah, Czech Games Edition area. Yeah. So cool. Enjoy All the right. show. Awesome. You too. Oh, you're still here. Well, while you're kicking it, how about subscribing to the Gaming Gang channel or seeing the latest episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch for finding out what YouTube recommends you check out here at my channel. And of course, don't forget, get your geek on at thegaminggang.com.